thank you very much for inviting me to give this talk. <clears throat> uh, today, I'd like to uh, give you a very short talk introducing CERN, uh, the European Organization for Particle Physics, and tell you a little bit about what I have been doing there for the last 40 years. So my first slide shows you actually where I am, where is CERN. It's in, uh, it actually sits on the border between Switzerland and France. I am sitting in France right now. If you can see the word Alice on the slide, I'm sitting really close to that word Alice. Alice is one of the Large Hadron Collider experiments. You can see the Large Hadron Collider. It's the yellow line on, uh, on the countryside, mostly French countryside in the foreground. In the background, you can see Lake Geneva and the Alps, the snowy Alps, okay? About 100 kilometers from here. So, well, I came to work on uh, experiment, not on the Large Hadron Collider. The Large Hadron Collider didn't exist then. If you can see a very small uh, CERN, C-E-R-N, in between Atlas and Alice, that's the main CERN site. And I, and I came to work there, actually. When I was born, my connection to India might be, actually, that... Um, I was desk question that I would like to explain to you. Okay, so CERN. Here's a picture painted by some of you may know this picture, very famous picture, uh, painting painted by a guy called Paul Gauguin, uh, the beginning of the last century when he was living in Polynesia in the Marquis Islands. Actually, not long after he painted this picture. He died. In the top left hand corner of the picture, you, you may not be able to see this, written in French are the three questions that he felt that uh, humankind had been asking for thousands of years, thousands of years. I'll let you reflect for 10 seconds. What do you think the three questions of? And where are we going? Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? The aim of particle physics, CERN and the LHC is to understand what the universe is made of, okay? Um, so this is what we do. How do we do it actually? And what do we know about the universe? And these are the questions I'm going to try to illuminate over the next few minutes. The scientific challenge is to understand the very first moments of our universe after the Big Bang. The idea is the universe was created with the Big Bang with equal amounts of matter and antimatter, rapid expansion, and then it has been expanding slowly for the last 13, 14 billion years. And the expansion is actually increasing somewhat right now. So this is the model that we have today. And in fact, when we look at the night sky, we're looking back in time and we're seeing light that is coming to us from 300,000 years after the Big Bang, when the universe became transparent. And this study of looking back in time is what we call actually is cosmology. This is related to cosmology. Cosmology is directly related to particle physics, of course. And we try to create at CERN the conditions that existed at the beginning in the Big Bang. To do this, we accelerate particles to very high energies in, and in this whole series of accelerators. We don't have just one single accelerator at CERN. And they end up in that ring that I showed you at the beginning. The ring itself 
is 100 meters below ground. So when I take my car out this afternoon and I drive through the countryside around where I live, I don't see any evidence for the LHC at all. It's all 100 meters below ground, which means it doesn't interfere with life on the surface. It's very environmental friendly. And also it means it's very safe as well. But what do we do with the LHC? Well, we put these uh, experiments below ground. So at four points around the ring, you see there Alice. I'm sitting on top of Alice almost. Uh, these big experiments, they're like cameras. We, we put them underground and they are the uh, they are the devices that take photographs of what happens when we insert particles inside the LHC, accelerate them to very high energies in opposite direct, and they travel in opposite directions, and we make them collide at Atlas, Alice, CMS, and LHCb. What particles? Uh, you can guess what particles we might use. Actually, we take protons. Where do we get our protons from? Well, there's a little red bottle you see there. This is a bottle of hydrogen. Hydrogen is the uh, simplest atom. It's made of protons and electrons. If we can break the bond between the protons and the electrons, we can throw the electrons away and we can accelerate and steer the protons through our whole chain of accelerators into the LHC, send them in opposite directions and make them collide at the experiments. Atlas, Alice, CMS and LHCB. Now this raises an interesting question. How do you accelerate a proton? Now, I know some of you are scientists, some of you are not. Um, I know the scientists will know uh, and uh, that if we have a proton, it has a positive charge. And if we show it a negative charge, it will move towards it. So we can accelerate it by showing it a negative electric field. We can also push it from behind with a positive electric field. It's like accelerating a donkey. You put a carrot in front of a donkey, it moves towards it. Uh, you can push a donkey, if you're not too cruel, from behind as well. What about the steering? Well, the steering is done with magnets, magnets. And those of you who are scientists will know why we actually have a special handshake at CERN. The handshake is like this. What does that mean? It means if you put a charge, if you uh, make a uh, charged particle move, in a magnetic field, which is at right angles to it, it will be pushed to the, uh, in, in the direction uh, away from its direction of motion and the, uh, and, the magnetic, and the magnetic field. So here we are. And it depends on the charge, which way it goes. Now, this is fantastic. This is school physics because it means you can make the protons dive under the ground. You can steer them. You can send them into the uh, LHC where you have the electric fields to accelerate. And this is how we get them to meet at the four points around the ring. Sounds very simple. It's quite technically difficult. If you come to visit CERN, you might get the idea when you walk around that CERN actually is not a particle physics laboratory. It's uh, uh, it's an engineering laboratory. Now, I know some of you are engineers, so there are fantastic engineering challenges at CERN to do all this. And in fact, we, we use equipment that some of it was built uh, 60 years ago. So CERN reuses 
the ideas, the expertise, uh, the, the technology that was developed a long time ago. Uh, very, very important, in, like, just like in uh, fundamental physics, we stand on the shoulders of the giants who've gone before us. Physics giants, engineering giants, technological giants as well. At CERN yesterday is as important as today and tomorrow. So let's move on. Let's Let's have a quick look. I can take you underground. Here I've taken you underground. This is the LHC tunnel. If you come to visit CERN, most of the times you can't see the LHC. Sometimes you can. We do have open days. But in this, uh, in this tunnel here, you can, uh, if you are working down there, no problem at all. You can see the tunnel curving away into the distance. It's 27 kilometers in circumference. The blue tube is actually the accelerator, the particle accelerator. And we send protons in opposite directions inside that blue tube. And we get approximately a billion collisions per second. Now that's a lot of data. That's a lot of data. So we have to sift through it. And we sift through it by, first of all, only looking at the stuff that we think is interesting and then processing it uh, using many, many, many computers distributed all over the world in actual fact. Okay, so we have the protons going in opposite directions. The blue tubes you see there are magnets to bend them in the ring. And inside, you see there are two tubes taking the protons round. Probably can't see that very well. Uh, they're in a vacuum, which is 10 times lower than on the moon. Here I've got a picture of Neil Armstrong. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And so the pressure in the pipes is 10 times lower than in, on, on the moon. Uh, that's because we don't want the protons to meet each other except where we want them to collide. Uh, the physicists amongst you uh, can ask the question, try to answer the question, why do we have two tubes? There are actually two tubes. There look to be more than two tubes. There are other tubes there because actually the accelerator is kept at 1.9 degrees Kelvin, 1.9 degrees Kelvin. That's pretty cold. Uh, why is that? Because the magnets are superconducting. This is just another example of the technology that we use. The two tubes obviously are brought together at the intersection points where the experiments are located. And there we get these collisions, which we have to filter. Now, what do the detectors themselves look like? Well, they're pretty big. This is Atlas and it's sitting next to the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. That shows you the size. It's 40 meters long, 25 meters high. Uh, and it lives not so far from where I am. Again, 100 meters in the ground. What does it do? The generic typical particle detector looks like this. And this is just a, a schematic of what happens when the particles collide. They produce lots of other particles and we have to identify and measure the properties of all of these particles. Do we actually see the ones that we're really interested in? No. We have to infer that the ones that we're really interested in are there because they have decayed much too early for us to see them. So we have to measure what we do see, and then we can infer that something produced them. And in the case uh, that everybody knows, a Higgs boson. Has a Higgs boson been produced? Has it decayed into particles that we do see and can measure the properties of? And can we recreate the properties of the Higgs boson? And this is the job of the particle detector. It's like a camera. It can take 40 million pictures per second. 
but we can't analyze 40 million pictures per second. We, the camera has to say, no, 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 no. Yes, maybe take this one, keep it, analyze. I hope you will get the opportunity to come to visit CERN yourselves. Well, you are very, very welcome, and I hope to see you. Thank you.